Sydney is Australia's largest city and is home to over 1,100 completed high-rise buildings, more than any other city in Australia. So, although it may not have the tallest building in the country, it does have a greater density and more variety of skyscrapers than any other Australian city. Most of these towers are located right in the heart of Sydney in the Central Business District. However, as you will soon find out, more of these buildings are starting to be constructed in the suburbs and surrounding districts outside the city center. The city is renowned for its museums, art, culture, and iconic opera house, but we're more interested in its high-flying office buildings and residential towers. So let's count them down. Number 10. Governor Philip Tower 227 meters or 745 feet. The first entry is located in the Central Business District, which lies on the south side of Sydney Harbor. The 61-story tower was constructed back in 1993 and was topped off with a very interesting steel-bladed roof design. Now, the height of this building is listed as 227 meters, however, it should be noted that the height with the antenna added on top is increased to 254 meters, which would bump it all the way to the number 3 spot if it were included. If this tower looks eerily familiar to you, it may be because you remember the building's cameo in the 2000 Tom Cruise film Mission Impossible 2, where it served as the headquarters for the evil Biosite Pharmaceuticals Corporation. Number 9. 25 Martin Place, 228 meters or 748 feet. This building was designed by Harry Seidler, an Australian architect who lived a fascinating life. He fled to England as a teen after the Nazis occupied his home country of Austria, studied architecture in Canada, attended Harvard Graduate School of Design and drew up plans for dormitories at MIT, and settled in Australia in 1946 and became one of the biggest promoters of architectural modernism in the country. And this modernistic approach is showcased well at 25 Martin Place, with the sleek concrete exterior that tapers slightly inward as the structure rises to the top floor, and is decorated with many horizontal indented concrete blocks. A design that was definitely considered modernistic when it was designed and built way back in the 1970s. Number 8 and number 7 is a tie. Maritun World Tower and 6 and 8 Parramatta Square. 230 meters or 754 feet. The Maritun World Tower was the tallest residential building in the city for 15 years until it was surpassed in the year 2020. It was also Australia's tallest residential building for a couple of years from 2004 to 2006. This close-up of the exterior shows the complexity of its design, with windowed projections jetting out from the base structure, at times with sharp jagged angles and other times, with rectangular boxes or other geometric patterns. The 6 and 8 Parramatta Square is the first building on this list to be located outside Sydney's central business district. Being located in the Parramatta district, which is located west of downtown and Sydney Harbour, and it is currently the tallest building in the suburb. The skyscraper was topped out in 2021, with the initial groundbreaking taking place in 2019 and construction continued into 2022, with an estimated project cost of 700 million Australian dollars. The tower is part of the Parramatta Square development, which has seen quite a few construction proposals that were cancelled or changed at some point as well as a proposal for the 6 and 8 Parramatta itself to reach a staggering height of 336 meters, which would have made it the tallest tower in the entire Sydney metro area. As you might have guessed, and which is usually the case, the local aviation authorities expressed their concerns despite the state government previously giving their approval. Number 6. Greenland Center, 237 meters or 778 feet. This is the new tallest all-residential tower in Sydney, capturing the title when it was topped out back in 2020. That's not the only thing that makes this building unique, however, as it has had a very unusual history. The construction site was initially home to the Sydney Waterboard Tower, which was a 24-story Art Deco building located right in the heart of the city. The old building was gutted and stripped, converted into a hotel, and an additional 40 stories of the Greenland Center were added to the top of the old development. Here you can see a diagram of the pre-existing tower and the additional floors of the Greenland Center that were built on top of the structure. The red partition clearly delineates the old structure from the new modern structure that was added on top of it. 
Number 5. Deutsche Bank Place, 240 meters or 787 feet. Now this skyscraper is quite the interesting anomaly. Not only is it topped off by a triangulated exoskeleton and dual oversized spires, the building also has extremely tall floor heights and is the second tallest building in the world with fewer than 40 stories. The tower itself is 31 stories tall. The original plans called for the tower to be much taller, however, the initially proposed height would have blocked sunlight from reaching the surrounding buildings, so the height of the occupied space had to be lowered. Sunlight and air also infiltrates the building itself from top to bottom by way of its unique design, a hollow core and atrium that lets in natural light throughout the structure. In the original plans for the building, the triangulated grid at the top of the skyscraper was supposed to house a biosphere and sky gardens, a nice source of oxygen for the occupants, but the idea was scrapped by the developer as it not only violated regulations by the city of Sydney, but also drove up the cost of the project. So the iconic see-through exoskeleton is what was designed instead, and the rest is history. Number 4. Citigroup Center 243 meters or 797 feet. This massive tower draws its name from the well-known international investment firm and anchor tenant Citigroup. Upon completion of the structure back in 2000, it was the eighth tallest building in all of Australia. The 50-story tower is topped by a 121-foot tall spire and is slightly beveled outward on one side of the building but otherwise has a pretty traditional block office building look outside of the somewhat chaotic architecture on the building's apex. Number 3. Chifley Tower, 244 meters or 801 feet. This 53-story tower was named after a former Australian Prime Minister, so it had to live up to its name. No expense was spared, and the total construction cost exceeded a whopping 1.2 billion Australian dollars. Here is a fun fact about the tower. It was the tallest building in Sydney for quite some time, from 1992 to 2019, until the 243-meter Citigroup Center was topped out. Then a 3-meter tall lightning rod was added to the structure, boosting its height just past Citigroup Center by 1 meter. But I'm sure it was nothing personal, no hard feelings, Citigroup. Number 2. Salesforce Tower, 263 meters or 863 feet. This building has recently captured the title for the tallest commercial structure in Sydney when it was topped out in February 2022. Although it is now the second tallest tower in Sydney, it is still currently under construction but should be completed later in 2022. Construction of the tower began back in 2019 and the project costs reached a grand total of $1.5 billion to complete. It is not just the sheer size of the structure that is striking as the exterior of the skyscraper is equally as impressive, with a modern, sleek black glass curtain wall and prominent white stripes that cascade down the building in various angles. Number 1. Crown Sydney, 271 meters or 889 feet. What a fitting name for this skyscraper, as it does, in fact, wear the crown for the tallest inhabited building in Sydney currently. And it appears that it will continue to wear it for quite some time, as the only building that will possibly overtake it during this decade is 56 Pitt Street, which would be the first skyscraper to break the 300-meter, super-tall structure mark in the city. The Pitt Street Tower is in the early proposed status currently and has not been approved yet, so only time will tell. Until then, the Crown Sydney will remain the tallest skyscraper in Sydney. And although it does not function as an inhabitable residential or commercial tower, an honorable mention needs to go to the Sydney Tower, home to the Sydney Tower Eye Observation Deck. The antenna spire of the Sydney Tower reaches a height of 309 meters, which would make it the tallest structure in the city at present. That wraps it up for now. Don't forget to check out our other videos of cities in Australia, including Melbourne and the Gold Coast. And consider subscribing to our channel as we will soon venture to other countries and cities in the coming months. Stay tuned.